This is a quick and easy guide showing you exactly how to use Fusion 360. There are two ways to create bodies or objects in Fusion 360. You can start with a pre-made shape and modify it, or you can start with a sketch and extrude the body. So let's start with a pre-made body. We go to create, and you can go to box, cylinder, sphere, torus, coil, or pipe. Let's go to box. Now when you create an object or a body, as they're called in Fusion 360, you want to select the surface that the body will sit on. So let's select the floor plane like this. And now we could drag out the first two dimensions of our box. You could even type them in. Let's just say 40. I'll hit tab and go to the next one and type in 40. And then you select your height, maybe 20. So there is our body. Pretty simple to create this object. All of the bodies in your design will be located here in this dropdown. So here's our body here, and we could rename it to, let's say, box, maybe box one, and press enter. And now we have the body named box, and we could toggle its visibility like so. Okay, so I'm gonna go back here, press control Z, and I'll show you the second way you can create the same exact thing. I could start with what's called a sketch, and just like before, you select which plane you want it to be on. I'll select the floor plane, and now you could either create a line, a rectangle, a circle, any 2D shape. So I'm going to select the 2D rectangle and click the point you want to start on. If you pull it out like this, you can now type in the dimensions. So let's do 40, press tab again to go to the next dimension, type in 40, and press enter. So now we have our simple 2D sketch. So click on finish sketch, and now we could extrude this area here. So if I click on the area, you'll see it highlights and now go up to extrude, and now we could pull it like this, and we could pull it to be 20 millimeters high. So that's two ways to create the same exact shape. But what if you wanna create something a little bit more complex? So I'm gonna press Control Z again, and just completely go back to the very beginning, and let's create something a little bit more complex. Uh, when you're creating something more complex, you'll want to probably start with the sketch. So once again, I'll select the floor plane, there, like that. Oh, and let's just go here. Uh, you can click on this view cube here if you want to go to the top view perfectly, like that. And okay, I'm going to drag it. Okay, so let's create something a little bit more complex. So let's start with a line this time. And we could uh, click to start the line. And we could choose its dimension by typing it in. There we go. And maybe I want it to go up this way. Uh, maybe it's a certain angle at a, I don't know, maybe. 120 degrees like this and I press tab and maybe this is I don't know 40 like this and then maybe it goes straight down here and you can see it automatically snaps to to want to line up with this here and I could click that and then click one more line and there we have our finished shape and you'll notice all the lines are black and that means our object is fully constrained if we try to move anything it's perfectly stuck and means we have all the dimensions filled out. And the cool thing is we could change these dimensions. So I could change this to 30. I could change this angle to maybe 130. You see it's completely parametric, so we could change the shape of our design however we want. Uh, we could even add, uh, let's say, a, a circle to the inside here. Let's just click like this. Okay, so there's a circle inside. You'll notice it's blue. Uh, it's because I haven't set any dimensions for it or haven't told it where to go either. So it's just floating around. When it's blue, it's not constrained. So if we want to constrain it, uh, we could set up some guidelines. So I'll go to line here and maybe we'll snap to the center. I don't know, let's snap to the center of this line here. And let's pull it out like this and maybe go to nine. Now let's do 12, there we go. Okay. And now if I want this circle to perfectly go right here on this dot here, I can select this dot and this dot, and I can add this coincident constraint. And now we see it, it lines up perfectly. And we can set the dimensions of the circle by selecting the circle, going to, let's see here, uh, select the circle and press D, and that'll give us the dimensions here. Uh, it'll let us set the dimensions. We can set it to, let's say, 10. So now you can see it's black. Uh, everything's perfectly perfectly constrained. If I try to move it, we can't move it. Um, and if you want this line just to be a guideline, just go over here and select construction. And now it's just a dashed guideline. Okay, so there's our complex, very accurate shape. 
and it's parametric, so we could change any dimensions in the future. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish the sketch. And now I can rotate around like this, select the profile. Once again, click extrude, and I can set the height of this object. So what's cool about this is now we have our 3D object. We could always go back to this timeline down here, double click on the sketch, and let's say we want to I don't know, make this a lot longer. We could change that dimension and click finish sketch, and you'll see our 3D object automatically uh, updates. Okay, two more things that are important are uh, fillets and chamfers. Uh, these add extra detail and refinement to your designs. So a chamfer, if we select uh, these three lines here, uh, holding shift to select multiple lines, we could add a chamfer, and you'll see what the chamfer does here. It just basically breaks the edge like this. Okay, so that's a chamfer, and we could also do a fillet. There's a shortcut here, just type or click the fillet, and let's do 10. So a fillet will round your edge. Now, if I want to modify this shape some more, an easy way to do that is to just right click on a face and you could go to move and copy. And now we could just simply drag it like this and I could rotate it. I could pull it out like this. Uh, you could basically do whatever you want as long as it will still work. So let's say maybe it wants to be some sort of funky shape like that and just go ahead and click OK to confirm. One more thing you could do is you could create objects on top of it or you could use objects to cut away from it. So let's say I want to cut another hole, I could create a cylinder, select the top of the object, create this cylinder and pull it down. Uh, let's see, pull it down and create the hole. Go ahead and click OK. So now we've created another hole. You could also do the exact opposite. Let's say this time let's do a box. You can select here, you can create your box and you could add this square, uh, let's see, press enter, but you could add a square like this. Now with those tools, you could pretty much create anything. To export a body as an STL file for 3D printing, all you have to do is right click on the body right here and go to save as mesh. Okay, now make sure it's set to STL and refinement medium is fine. And then just go ahead and click OK. To save a design, all you have to do is simply click save and choose which project you like it to be located in. A project essentially like a folder for multiple designs. So I'm just gonna save this as maybe a box one and then click save. And to see all your projects you've worked on, go to the data panel here and you can see all of your different uh, projects which are essentially folders for designs, like I said. And I could open up my tutorials project and there is my design here, box one. Double click and we're already in it but there is box one. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. My name is Steven and happy printing.